Hello and welcome again to my workbench. This will be part two of the Yazoo FT221R restoration and repair series. The first order of the day today is to take and get the bottom cover off of the radio and take out the power supply board. That is the first thing we are going to do is to that to work on the power supply board to get it recapped. After we get it recapped, I will go through that section of the alignment to make sure the voltages are all proper. And after we get that, then I will go to the microphone and uh, get a microphone that I have to rewire and add the four pin connector on because this microphone is not going to work. This microphone, although I haven't opened it, it is a um, normally closed switch and opens when you depress the push to talk, which is not what this radio needs. This radio needs a normally open switch that closes when you push the push to talk. I do have a big um, right, a big uh, sure mic that's actually branded uh, Harris that can do that. It also has a locking uh, switch so that it can be locked for a long time. So although you're not supposed to do that in ham radio, it's supposed to only be a momentary push to talk, but the radio, the microphone is a good one and that's what I'm going to use. First order of business on getting the bottom off here is to get these off. The power connector. It's just a Jones plug that unplugs and then to remove the antenna, which is just a PL259. Here I have an HT antenna, a rubber duck, just on an adapter to give me an antenna when I'm down here, because I don't have an antenna in the basement. And then, according to the service manual, you remove these four screws, and then the bot, and then four screws on the sides okay, so without dropping it <laughs> and then the bottom part of the cabinet should just lift right off all right I've started to remove these screws from the sides and uh, if my voice sounds a little bit different than it did in other videos yeah, I'm a little bit overheated and all that. It's been one of the hottest, continuously hot and humid weeks here in Northeast Ohio. And it's currently 84 in my workshop with probably, oh, 70% plus humidity, maybe 100. I don't know, I don't have a hydrometer, but it's very hot and very humid. I did want to say one thing about the screws, you know, if you're new to this, you should have something to put these screws in as you're removing them so that you don't lose them like I do here. Uh, what this is, is a little drawer out of my capacitor bin, uh, the one that's empty, and uh, a little mention about screwdrivers, don't get cheap tools don't get cheap screwdrivers. They'll only cause you pain. Um, get good ones. Don't go to Harbor Freight to go get your tools. Um, for screwdrivers, you want to get good, uh, good brands like Cobalt, or if you can still find them, the Made in the USA Craftsman. Um, that's going to become less and less common since Craftsman has now been sold to Stanley Toolworks as a name 
and Stanley makes things pretty much all in, Ch in China. But you want good American made screwdrivers. Um, if you want to go real high end, yeah, get the American made snap ons. But uh, I don't go that, uh, that route. I just have a couple sets of craftsmen here. Um, like I said, the American made cobalt tools that you find at um, Lowe's are also quite nice. Um, the good screwdrivers will not die quickly. Uh, cheap screwdrivers have cheap steel to where the tips, uh, yeah, where the tips are not formed uh, very sharply and the tips uh, dull quickly and strip out screws. So yeah, don't waste your life on cheap tools. It's not worth it. Been there, done that, just don't. Alrighty here, I have got the bottom panel loosened up. So now we are going to have the big reveal. This is a speaker, so there's hopefully the connector to hold it on. It may get a little, there we go. And there it is. See if I can. Oh, and it's screwed together. All right. <laughs> nice one, Yazoo. Uh, <laughs> I guess it won't come apart accidentally. Wait a second. Yeah, no. No, I'm just dumb. So, yeah, let me screw that back together because that was kind of dumb. <laughs> that didn't need to be done. Wow. Hey, yeah, live, live mistakes. That's fine. Okay. And uh, all right, and this is the board we're going to be interested in. This is the uh, power supply board. So let me uh, turn away these caps and uh, see if we've got a date code. Need for working volts. Oh no. Uh, No obvious date code, although there is something that looks like a date code on the bridge rectifier. And that says 27 of 85. I don't know if I believe that, unless that's been replaced. And then also, we get to do our first okay, shake test, just to see if it uh, has anything in it. And no, it doesn't. So. <coughs> Sorry about that. So next uh, order of business, and you can see the rest of the radio is all modular with uh, plug-in circuit boards. Um, so each one will come out on its own. I will see how this is going to work for the power supply board. Um, yeah, that could be interesting. All right. Oh, and the other noise that you hear is the washing machine. The workshop is in the basement, and I have a wife, so I sometimes need to do laundry. All right, I've also decided to take the top cover off, give you a quick overview of the internals from back to front. So here on the left, we have the power transformer. See, it's a fairly well-made power transformer. There is a good bit of heft in here, um, FMIF unit, and SSB IF units, so the two different IF units for um, the FM section and the SSB slash um, CW section. Tone burst, not very useful anymore. Was useful in the 70s because the uh, um, repeaters would trigger with a frequency between one and three kilohertz that was subimposed, that was imposed on the carrier frequency, on the uh, audio signal. They don't do that anymore. They do uh, PL or what, um, what's called PL, or private line, uh, copyright Motorola, but it is a low frequency tone, um, which should be subaudible on this. Um, usually 
between 68 and 168 hertz. It shouldn't be heard. Sometimes if your oscillator wasn't good in the early days, you would hear overtones of it. So a mic amp, which is also the uh, modulator section. So you have two different sections. You have for uh, you know, your AM, USB, and LSSB, and then your FM um, section. VFO, uh, variable frequency oscillator, which is this gear section there. So this is actually what drives everything here. This is what creates the fundamental frequency. Um, and then back in here is, I'll flip that around, <laughs> your audio frequency amp and your marker unit for your uh, calibration. Uh, this section back here with the big heat sink on it, this big heat sink, this is your uh, PA or power amplifier. They just call it the boost unit. And uh, the, and so this is the receiver RF side, you know, front end, um, POL, um, so it does have a phase loop lock uh, to keep the frequency on center. Um, so it has a comparator and will adjust the uh, variable, f uh, the uh, VCO, the ver voltage controlled oscillator that is in here to keep things a level. You know, local unit, uh, this is where all the frequencies for each range, each band range here are created. And then here, the fixed unit, which is up here, tilt that up so you can maybe see it there, is a bunch of fixed crystal oscillators. So you can have stuff set to a permanent frequency to then, um, so you don't have to worry about drift or anything like that. That's a little bit of a pricey uh, thing to fill nowadays. All right, on to getting the power supply out. All right, since I just looked at the tape counter and it's at 15 minutes, um, there'll be stuff I'll edit out, so it'll be end up being around a 15 minute video after editing. I'm going to use this as my break point, and I just wanted to show this, which will be the microphone I will use. It's a Harris branded Shure microphone. It has this nasty Jones connector on it, um, not Jones, Ampanol connector, um, which triggers other things in the, their equipment, such as an override of the squelch with the monitor, and then we have the transmit. Um, Kind of an interesting way you have to do that, but hey, this should be a good mic and 